Welcome back to Takedown Wrestling. Today I'm joined by Dennis Hall, myself, Tony Hager here. We are in the Nike Wrestling Hot Seat uh, talking some Greco wrestling, lots of uh, changes in rules and uh, you know the, the Olympic Games are over and we're moving forward and uh, who better to have on the show than Dennis Hall. Welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks a lot for having me. So you got a, you're in a new place now? You got your you got your own spot and you're moving things in. I see you got a nice little tree. Yeah, it's okay. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, are you are you getting in the room right now at all? I mean, are you are you involved in the sport on a weekly basis, or are you just a, kind of a fan right now? No, I'm I'm definitely in the trenches, uh, coaching kids. Uh, ben Provisor's up in Stevens Point with me. Uh, we're putting them through workouts. Uh, you know, I got a kids club that I run on Sundays right now. I'm actually uh, going down to Kentucky this weekend, so I'm I'm on the mat quite a bit right now. Well, that's great. That I mean, you can you can still get on the mat. I mean, wh- how old are you now? I am 45. 45. I'm 32, and I I I don't know if I could get in the room and roll around anymore. My knees are are shot. I can only imagine. Uh, I can only imagine how your knees feel, but uh, obviously your your passion uh, for the sport. You've got a podcast out there um, that uh, you do with two other. Uh, wh- what other? How can they um, get involved with your podcast? How often does it does it air? A couple weeks usually, about every two weeks, twice a month. Uh, we try and just delve into topics that really matter in the sport, kind of give our opinion and. You know, uh, talk about the things that are important in wrestling. Well, what the biggest thing that's important, and we've been kind of just driving this hammer on TV, on radio, is the the Greco. I feel like it's growing. It's right on that cusp of being a very popular sport for fans to watch. Uh, but there's always something that is kind of hindering it, and it was real apparent this year for the Olympic Games for me. As, as somebody that's a new Greco fan, the parterre, uh, you know, U.S. getting put on the bottom, and it was, uh, you almost just kind of felt like if we got put on the bottom, we were going to lose the match. But now they've changed these rules, and I wanted to get your opinion on when, you know, were you in favor of the rule change, and what are your thoughts now that it now has actually been uh, it placed uh, in Greco? You know, I I don't care. We just got to get better. It's that simple. Uh, you know, if our tear cost us to lose every match at the World Championships, we're not doing something right. And uh, so I don't think the rules matter. I just don't like the way the rules headed. I I mean, I'm glad that they go on their feet and you got to score a takedown to get on top. But the thing that concerns me is the power that the referees are still going to have being able to award points for passivity. That is a horrible mistake, and you'll see it this next year. Mark my words, there's going to be corruption. Um, you know, and, and it's just, it's horrible for the athletes have, to have to worry about that. And, you know, it, my point is if, if a match is 0-0 at the end of six minutes, go three more minutes. Somebody's going to break in a nine-minute match. Have overtime. You know, don't give matches away. Um, prime example is uh, the Serb uh, and the Armenian at the Olympics at 66 kilo. The Armenian scores a legitimate point, but the Serb wins the Olympic championship by a passivity call. It, it's uh, it's ridiculous that they can allow that stuff to happen. Um, the Armenian was attacking the Serb for the last 45 or throughout the whole match, but the last 45 seconds extremely hard and never got the call he deserved. And now he's an Olympic silver medalist and, you know, his lifelong goal doesn't want to compete anymore. And, and I, I get it, man. I've been there. And, you know, the referees making calls to control matches is what I hate about our sport. Um, you know, they got to think before they implement rules that will give uh, referees power. Do you, do you feel like this gives them more power? Does it make it worse? I mean, I think on the outsider's perspective, this is a positive. I mean, we hear all the, the wrestlers saying get rid of force parterre, but is there an underlying issue here? Does this give us more 
you hear the wrestlers from the U.S. saying, get rid of Forrest Parterre because we we're not good at it. They didn't spend the time they needed to to get tough in that position and be able to defend against the best in the world. I mean, I, I remember matches where I was put down two, three times in a match and I won the match. You know what? I put my time in where I was weak. And I, I, I'd rather have somebody be able to get on top of me and then he, he spends his energy and he doesn't turn me and I get back up on my feet and beat the hell out of him. Um, you know, but right now I just, I see it. I like that they want more scoring on the feet. I get that. But I think um, the way they're going to award the passivity points, I'm really concerned about that. Leading up to the Olympics, I talked with uh, Timmy Hands with Five Point uh, Move, and I really learned a lot about Greco, and I, I learned kind of what they're doing, preparing to get ready for Olympic Games, and it was all worry, uh, you know, working on the bottom, trying to get you know this whole parterre issue. And I was told that they worked a ton on it leading up to Olympic Games. Like that's almost the only thing that they worked on. I mean, how, what do you what do you think about how how Matt Lindland has uh, what he's done with the program and where we can go forward from this? Is he doing the right things? Or- <laughs> He's, he's fighting and losing battle. Um, you know, we got to get more support from the college programs. I, I say that every time I talk. Um, you know, we need more support from USA Wrestling. If, if you got a failing part of a company, are you going to put more money into the, com- the uh, part of the company that's doing well, or are you going to invest more money and resources into something that's failing? And right now, I I don't see um, the resources being put into Greco. And I know USA will say, hey, we're doing our share. USA Wrestling will say that. But the the problem is, is we got how many regional Olympic regional training centers are there for freestyle? And that is a problem. I mean, they got a great feeder system for freestyle, and we don't have that for Greco. And it's... uh, it's tough. I mean, I, I'd love to start one here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, get 15, 20 guys training up here and uh, help guys with what I know and, and push them as hard as they want to be pushed. But, you know, it all comes down to finances. Do you feel like it's harder to coach Greco than maybe the freestyle or, or folk? Is it harder to develop a wrestler to because everyone knows folk style pretty much as they grow up. Is it harder to develop that kid into a Greco full-time wrestler? Um, the only reason it's harder to develop a kid in a Greco wrestler is because of um, our mindset in the United States. Everybody starts out wrestling folk style first, then they might do freestyle or Greco. And uh, I think it's just harder because... Greco is not as popular in the United States. I, I know a lot of kids that love it, that w- want to train it, but there just isn't the opportunities to do it year round. I mean, because you, you were a folk style wrestler, but you quit. You got out of it and focused on, completely on Greco. And what what made you make that switch? Uh, I was at the University of Wisconsin. I uh, wrestled my freshman year for the Badgers. Um When I was, after my freshman year, they didn't have uh, the coaches, coaching staff for me to achieve my goals at that level. And I'm like, I made my whole team and competed in the world championship (laughs) in in Rome. And at that point, it was either go to the world championships or stay in college and pass up the opportunity that I earned. And I ended up uh, just leaving because I didn't know if I was going to reach my goal in college because I didn't have a coach, a lightweight coach. And I'm, it was an easy de- shit decision for me. So I'm going to give me one. I got to let my – again, sorry. No, you're all right. So I was just uh, – sorry about that. No, you're all right. Come on in. I'll, okay. save you, I'll, I'll save you go back to the same spot so I can edit that out. 
Okay, I apologize. You're all right. I got two dogs myself, so I get it. <laughs> and now he's going to be laying on me. That's okay. That's yeah, all right. We can get him in there. Yeah. Is that good again? Yep, that's good. Okay. So, I mean, Jesse Thilke kind of did the same thing. He, he's focusing now on Greco. Uh, you know, have, is that some, something that you've discussed with him at all? Or what's your relationship with Jesse? I mean, I get along with Jesse good. Uh, I haven't really talked to him. I mean, I, I think he could have made that decision a little bit earlier. He His college career didn't turn out the way he wanted to, um, which is a shame because he could have been a heck of a college wrestler. But I, I think circumstances dictate, you know, how you do in the sport in, in any style. And I, I think his heart was more in the Greco, and he didn't follow his heart like I followed mine. With some of this young talent coming up, like Jesse Thilke, I, I feel like media fans are are more excited about the future of Greco than they've ever they've ever been, or it just seems like. There's lots. There's a lot more talk about Greco, which is great for the the, the sport. And uh, m- what are your thoughts on the young talent? Is there a guy on that national team that caught your eye? Somebody that you're excited to see progress in in the, to the senior level? You know, I I know uh, there's a lot of younger guys that are tough. Um, you know, uh, Hancock did did a great job. Uh, at the world championships this year. I know we had a, another medal. Um, you know, it just comes down to these guys buying in. Um, the thing you got to remember, the average American has to remember when you're talking about Greco is overseas. They start at nine, 10 years old and they don't ever touch a leg. That is all they are doing, you know, for the entire year. You know, they're, they're pretty much in facilities where they're training once or twice a day on the mat, just focusing on technique. And that's why we're so far behind. And, you know, until we get more guys committing at the 18, 19 years old uh, in their life, committed to the sport of Greco, we're, we're always going to be behind. And I think the biggest thing is we need to provide more opportunities for kids to do Greco more during the uh, once a folk style season is over, I know folk style is huge in the United States. I don't have a problem with that, but, um, you know, folk style nationals, uh, in the spring goes usually, uh, beginning of April and, you know, our high school kids should be training freestyle and Greco before that, not training folk style. I mean, there's a lot of skill sets that transition from freestyle or Greco back to folk style. So, the more kids can get a variety of wrestling, I think the better. When I was little, I wrestled folk style, freestyle, sambo, um, and Greco. I wrestled four styles of wrestling. So it didn't matter what style it was. I was having fun trying to beat some guys up. I mean, USA Wrestling has a ton of USA Wrestling folk style events. There's, I, I'd hope that there's some kind of maybe a movement to we can figure out where we have more Greco tournaments. That that's where this all starts. I think it's not really maybe maybe the practices get some more Greco involvement in those practices, but to have more events that are Greco. Because from what I see, from my perspective, is the states have their state wrestling tournament, maybe some regional tournaments to get into Fargo, and then you wrestle a Greco at Fargo. Those are really your only opportunities to go to a Greco tournament. So why sure. are why are there not those options at a freestyle tournament or just a Greco only tournament? Why has no one, <laughs> why has no one ever done this? Yeah, I mean I know in Wisconsin uh, when we have our uh, weekend tournaments in the spring that they do have Greco tournaments. They'll do a freestyle and then do a Greco right after a Greco first, freestyle second. So we're making. I mean it, it's not too horrible here, but. The problem is, is once uh, our state tournaments get done at the uh, younger youth levels, that um, they kind of are done until the next year. So it's it's they don't compete a ton in freestyle or Greco as a youth, um, and that's where I see a little bit of a problem. I'd like to see, you know, the fifth through eighth graders getting a little more competition. 
in, in the styles because I think then, you know, hopefully you pull a kid that just decides, hey, I want to do it. It's pretty cool. I enjoy chucking guys on their head, and it's great to, you know, just be in a street fight. It's pretty much that's what Greco is. Yeah, it's well, it's a, it's a it's a fight from the feet, and some people have deemed it kind of an art. It, it's an art to be able to 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 use that leverage from their feet, and it's something that is really kind of, I guess, giving me a new passion for the Greco with so many people like Timmy Hands with Five Point, Coach Linlin, yourself, and I think just getting the word out there that uh, I mean, maybe our young our young stars can really kind of push push maybe these younger kids that yes it's not as popular right now but we can we can turn you guys into stars i think that's what really kind of is hurting us as we see these freestyle guys like jordan burroughs get all this attention and and love which is great but no one on the greco is getting as much attention so hopefully five point move can can uh continue to to do that and here at takedown we, we continue to push this Greco movement. And, uh, Dennis, I really appreciate your time coming on and talking about these new rules and the future, and, and hopefully we can uh, catch up uh, on Takedown Radio or on the show once again. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the interview. Thank you. Have a good one.